Amen? Amen. You know, when I was a kid, uh, I watched this uh, fine tale here <laughs> called The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Now, I know it's about a headless horseman, and, and I know that scares some, and, and you're already running for the hills. But I'm here to tell you that this, this tale, believe it or not, is a Christian tale. Now, I know, you, I know you may be surprised by that. I know that may shock you. But I'm going to explain why, why that is so. You see, this little cartoon, and, and you can see it now on uh, this platform here uh, for free. You can watch it right here, and uh, there's actually a few different versions of it out there. There's one that goes along with Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, or that, that's the one that was, that was the ride that used to be at Disney World. But uh, Mr. Toad is another a story that kind of uh, put along with this, and that's probably the best quality version in terms of uh, clarity of the screen and everything. But, uh, you know, I, I took a gander again at this today. I, again, I haven't really watched it since I was a little kid. Or maybe I showed it to my kids. I, I don't know if I did. No, I don't, I'm not sure I did. But uh, in any case... Um, but I was realizing today, I mean, most of the, most of the, of it, it's only 30 minutes long and most of it is all about a love triangle. Basically, it's only the last 10 minutes really of the whole thing that is about, uh, the headless horseman. And, uh, what I realized today is that this is a Christian tale, believe it or not. I mean, it, it's in there the, the message is in there. Now it, it's not overtly Christian. It's not preaching Christ, but uh, I will show you, and you may be amazed, what light is. So, Ichabod Crane, or the Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Now, Ichabod Crane, it's, uh, it's another name for this story. Um, and it's kind of an interesting name, I Ichabod Crane. Now, you know, he's shaped, and they say this in the movie, he's shaped a little bit like a crane. And you could say he has an icky bod, I suppose. But I was... I was looking a little closer and I thought, this looks, seems like an anagram to me. And when I put it in the old anagram machine, the biggest word that came out was archdeacon. Archdeacon. Now, there are a few other words like arachnoid or draconic, I thought was kind of interesting, like with a dragon or something. But archdeacon uh, kind of stood out to me there. It's the only, it's, it's the biggest word you can get from Ichabod Crane, 10 letters long. And uh, I found that kind of intriguing because a deacon is not translated in the Bible. It's actually diaconeo, meaning it's basically the same word that's in the Bible, is diaconeo or a deacon. And a deacon really just means to be a servant or to minister to someone. And so Ichabod Crane is representing the archdeacon in this story, the arch servant, the servant, you know, arguably of the Lord. Now, of course, in the story, it's more of a love story. He's trying to get a girl and, and so forth. But the way I take it, you know, when, when I look at it, when we're facing darkness, and it's like light versus darkness battle, we have this archdeacon, this arch servant of the Lord, and he's fighting against this dark force that's coming at him. Now, in the story, we have this rider on a horse. And because I'm talking about the four horsemen today, I felt this was very appropriate, along with riders in the sky. They all deal with horses and light and darkness, basically. So you've got this rider on the horse, right? Rider on the horse. And he's got no head. Okay, now that's a bit curious already. And he's holding a flaming pumpkin in his hand. Okay, flaming pumpkin. Now, um, he, what he's trying to do throughout the story is he is trying to... Um, he's trying to cut off Ichabod's head, okay? Now, we know that uh, there's going to be a time of trial. And, and here's the thing, guys. I mean, <sighs> there's horrible things happening in the world, okay? That's a fact. That's a fact. There's horrible things always going on in the world. There's horrible things that happen around this holiday. There's always horrible things, okay? But you can choose to look at the light or you can choose to look at the darkness. You can choose, you know, to, to get down and discouraged, which is very easy to do because there's always something you can be discouraged about. Or you can choose... As the Bible tells us to, to think about whatever is good, excellent, praiseworthy, noble, think about such things. And so we all, and, and to be joyful always, I will say it again, re, be, be, rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. So, you know, we have to find always the silver lining. We always got to look for the light through the darkness, right? Because darkness is, is always there. Okay. It's always there. So we got to find what is God trying to teach us through this? How are we going to grow through this? Okay. So obviously this is a kid's cartoon, but 
I'm digging something out of this. Now, I have to say, this is sort of the golden age. I mean, you know, Disney, good, bad, or ugly, you know, whatever you want to say about them. I mean, they, they obviously have, have gone the way of the cuckoo. But, um, but this time period right here, which I couldn't get a strong date, whether it was 1948 or 1950, but somewhere in that ballpark that this was made. Um, but in any case, around 1950, you know, that was sort of the golden age of, like, Disney animation. Like in terms of the quality of the actual animation. Now, you know, again, you can argue about hidden meanings and all this kind of stuff, but I'm just talking about the animation. You know, the animation side of it was like, like this, they pack out like a, some good animation in this half hour uh, video. I'm like, wow, I was, I was kind of impressed actually. It was like very entertaining to actually watch and not just kind of phoned in animation. Like you could tell that they actually put a lot of work into it. So, um, so I, you know, my head's off to the, hand done animators because that's what they were doing back then not the cg that we see today but this hand done animation so i thought it was pretty impressive but um but anyway so you got this guy he's on a horse he's all in black and and red which is interesting two of the colors of the four horsemen that we're going to be talking about today and he's trying to take the heads off of ichabod now that's his goal as a headless horseman he's trying to remove the heads from other people and the first quote that i gave to you when i opened up this video is actually from Ichabod Crane, Sleepy Hollow. And that quote is, and I repeat, once you cross that bridge, my friends, the ghost is through. His power ends. So the whole deal with this guy, um, and, and we know like in Revelation 13, there's going to be heads that are rolling uh, for Christians. And we know that in Revelation 20, those who lose their head for the Lord are going to be resurrected and reign with him. So there is already like a biblical, you know, connection here with this idea. And of course, the four horsemen of the apocalypse and so forth. Um, but it, it gets even deeper than that. Now, here he is coming after Ichabod, the archdeacon, the arch servant, right? Say of the Lord, the, representing light. And he's coming in darkness and he wants to cut off his head that that's his, that's his, what he's trying to do. And so, you know, again, maybe a little scary for little kids. Um, but the spiritual ramifications are really intriguing. So, so he's trying to cut off the head. Now you think about Jesus is the head of the church, right? And so what, what, what Satan always wants to do is separate you from Jesus, right? That's his goal. Separate you from Christ. So separate the body from the head. And so Jesus is the head. We are the body, the church, and so Satan is always trying to separate us from Christ. And that's his goal. If he can separate us from Christ before we get to heaven, before we cross the bridge and get to the other side, then he's won, right? That's his goal. That's what he's trying to do. So that's what he's doing in this. And again, you could just watch the last 10 minutes of, of the video and you'll basically get it. So here's the bridge, right? Here's the infamous bridge. And it's very, very intriguing. Like, why do they choose this idea of a bridge? And what's interesting is the horseman, he can't cross the bridge. He's, he's not able to cross it, but for whatever reason, he cannot cross that bridge. And it's very similar to like us crossing over to the other side. You know, Satan cannot snatch you out of God's hand. He can't do it. Once you're in God's hand, he cannot snatch you out. And so it's very, very intriguing. And, um, and you think about crossing the Jordan River, crossing the Red Sea. You know, there's always a symbolism in, in the Bible. That's what baptism is all about. You're crossing over to the other side. You die to the old life. You're buried with him in baptism. You're raised to a new life, Romans 6. It's the same concept. So, you're going over to the other side. And so he has to get to this bridge and this, this horseman is trying to take his head off and trying to block him from getting to that bridge. And he's trying to, um, you could argue he's got this uh, jack-o'-lantern, this uh, pumpkin, flaming pumpkin in his hand, which is kind of like a fake head. You know, you think about they also have the pumpkin king, I think, you know, that's another one. And this idea of like a hollow head, sleepy hollow, like sleepy, you're asleep, you're, asleep, you're not you know, you're not awake in the Lord, you're asleep and you're hollow inside. You don't have the Holy Spirit. So there's a lot of depth, uh, I think, you could dig out of this. Um, and so here he finally makes it to the bridge, right? And he gets across the bridge and the horseman stops at the other side because he can't cross over like, like, like Ichabod did. But the horseman throws one last, you know, flaming pumpkin at him. I guess the only flaming pumpkin maybe that he has. Um, but he throws it at him through the bridge and we get the camera view that it hits. Now, we don't know if Ichabod looked back. You know, you know, God says when you go to heaven, don't look back, right? Like, don't be like Lot's wife and look back to the world. You know, you just keep on going. And, uh, and so we don't know if that was him looking back 
or just the camera angle looking back. And so they leave it a mystery at the end. You don't know what happened to Ichabod. But he disappears. He is snatched away one way or the, or the other. And uh, so there's a bit of a harpazo connection here because at the end of the a story they say, well, you know, they just see the pumpkin laying there and they say, we don't really know what happened to Ichabod. Some say he was seen over here, over there, but others say he was spirited away. And uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, there's this hand that appears in the sky, like grabbing onto the moon here. And, uh, you know, almost like the gathering hand, the gathering hand in, in, in the story. And, uh, and so you, you wonder, what happened to Ichabod? Did he get snatched away? And so it's interesting to say he was spirited away. And then at the very end, the narrator, who also plays all the characters, which is Bing Crosby, by the way, um, and does a nice job singing the moon. But uh, uh, he, at the very end, says, well, I'm out of here. I'm getting out of here. Like that's, that's the very last thing he says in the, in the whole movie. And uh, so it left me kind of going, huh, kind of interesting uh, connection with the spiritual battle that we fight to try to get to the other side. If we can just stay connected to Christ, if we can just keep our head on our body, you know what I'm saying? And stay connected to Christ. And so we kind of have a deeper understanding of why the devil wants to remove people's heads so much. It like represents uh, Christ, you know, and Christ in our life. So I thought that was kind of uh, compelling and intriguing and, a, and, a, and a, another good horse connection for this season as we go a little deeper here. Now,